Hey, saints, we got ourselves about a minute before we get started here. So again, prepare yourself, get your stuff together, guys, get your stuff together. You already have the device that you're going to be looking at me from, but get you something to write with. Don't trust your brain. Don't trust your brain. Try to remember these things because the enemy going to fight it. He's going to do everything he can to fight it. Okay, guys, we are now rolling out of this train station right here. I'm going to put my note up that my wife sent me, because it gave me, and that is to say, slow down. <laughs> slow down. Sometimes the mind is moving way faster, um, way faster than, or I'm talking way faster than I'm thinking, guys, and I'm thinking way ahead, if you will. And so what's taking place is you'll find me, uh, get the squirrel brain, and I'm over here, shouldn't be over there. But what we're going to do, we're going to go forward in the Word of God. Let me remove the church so I will not be distracted by who is in and not in church. So nevertheless, guys, as we always do, we're finna go into spiritual matters. Please, always remember what I'm telling you here. When you're getting ready to deal with the Word of God, you're going from the natural realm into the spiritual. So what you have to do is prepare yourself with a spiritual mindset. So that's when you go to prayer. Prayer is an earthly request for heavenly wisdom. So we here in the natural crying out to God in the spiritual to give us understanding that we may be able to understand his word. So that's why you always pray when it comes to dealing with the word of God, the things of God, because you want his wisdom. That's what you're asking for. So let's go before the throne of grace, if you will. Father. We honor you, we bless you, and we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity you have given us once again to come before the throne of grace. Lord, we just want to tell you thank you for the day that you have allowed us to get through, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that it may not always been perfect today, but Lord, we thank you that you got us through it. We're able to get home or to the place, Lord, we're familiar with and rest ourselves. Lord, we just want to say we thank you for you being so good to us, Lord, taking a moment to come visit us here, Lord God, in the time of studying thy word. Now, we do not know everything that is is to know about your word, Lord. We desire to know more. So, we plead to the Holy Spirit, the one who have written the word of God, the one who knows your every thought, for he is you, Father. And I pray, Lord, the Holy Spirit down in us, that he may exegete this word, that we may have a good understanding of what you are saying. Help me, Lord, to stay right here in the moment, that I may not get my mind, Lord, distracted, Lord, with trying to give so much information. It's not about the quantity, but it's about the quality. So, help me Lord, to give a quality of thy word of God to thy people. So with that said, right now, by my own free will, I'm going to give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over this time and message, Lord, that he may be able to open up the truths of thy word. I choose to follow you, Lord, whatsoever way you may go. Now, I ask you, Lord, to bless the saints, that they may stay focused in on hearing what the Holy Spirit has to say to them. For them, Lord, help us that we may grow in your word, Father. So to the saints, Lord, that are right here with me, I pray, Lord, that you bless them, that they may stay focused, that they will not be distracted in any way, form, or fashion by the enemy who comes with his tricks, Lord, to pull them away from hearing what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. To those that, Lord, will be joining us shortly, I pray, Father, that you get them to a safe place, Lord. Let them take their time realizing that this is video that they can go back and look at it at a later time, Lord, that they may not get themselves in danger to come to join us, Lord, but I pray that they get to a safe place where they're able to sit down and join with the rest of the family in Bible study. And to those, Lord, that will not be joining us tonight for whatever reason, I plead the blood of Jesus that you put it on their hearts, that they search out the scripture. Scriptures, Lord, and they may search out, Lord God, the study that they may be able to go through the word of God with us, Lord. I pray, Father, to those, Lord, that will be joining us, Lord, that's coming across these airwaves by a happen chance or a mistake or what have you, that they may take, Lord, and be able to study thy word and hear what you are saying and apply this to their lives. Oh, Father, to those that are lost, we plead the blood of Jesus that their souls come in and we'll forever give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. I ask you, Lord, to lead me through in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Hey, and if you agree with that prayer, say amen, saints. Again, and you students of Firm Foundation online Bible study and to the members of our Firm Foundation, you know when we say amen, what does that mean? Amen simply means what? Yes, I agree with what just been said. So you should always listen when a person is praying. You should always listen when a person is speaking on the word of God before you say your amen. Because you can't put your amen, meaning your stamp of approval, on something that God did not say or something that does not line up with the word of God. It's important that you listen, saints. Always listen. The word says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord says unto the church. Now, with that said, we're going to go, go into the word of God, studying the word of God with our ever popular what? Slingshot effect. And what that is to you all that don't know, to new viewers that is about um, that come and go about with us through this Bible study, a slingshot effect means, you know what a slingshot is. It's something you may put um, a little rock or whatever in and you pull back. Now, the further you pull back, the further that thing is going to go that's coming out of that slingshot. So in our slingshot effect, what we do is we go back to what we studied on last week and we touch on that so we can push forward and have a better understanding of what we're going to be talking about this week. So last week, guys, we went into um, Acts the 26th chapter. We was at the last part of 26, and we're going into 27 today. But 26th chapter, and we started at verse uh, verse um, 29. Let's go with 29, and let's read that. i uh, read down from 29 to 32, and then we'll briefly touch that and move forward with new information, okay? And so in verse number 29, it says, And Paul said, I would to God. Now, remember... As a matter of fact, I go to 28 so you can get a better context to those that may be just joining us and was not here with us last week. And it says, And Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all that hear, hear me this day would both almost and altogether such as I am, such as I am except these bonds. And when he had and when he had thus spoken, the king rose up and the governor and Bernice and they that sat with them. And when they had gone aside to talk between themselves, saying, this man, this man doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, this man may have been set all set at liberty if he had not appealed to Caesar. Now, what we have taken place and we realized last week and we were studying on the whole thing that was taking place is Paul had gotten to speak for himself and he made such a passionate plea uh, with the word of God out to the ones that were listening. He had a, a very important audience. He had a very educated audience. He had a political audience and he had um, those that did not know God at all. He had a religious audience all there at the same time and he was pleading and making a case for Jesus and in him making this case for Jesus. Jesus, he was beginning to go through and, and beginning to quote scriptures. And we learned that Festus, not knowing anything about this, being a Roman, he thought Paul had went crazy. But Paul was making a statement to Queen, King Agrippa, I know you know what I'm talking about. And then he asked the question point blank to Agrippa, do you believe it? I know you do. You know the law. And so with that said, and Paul Agrippa said, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. And Paul was like, I would to God that you would. I wish you, I wish you was a Christian. And not only you, but everybody standing here listening and everyone would have come under the sound of my voice. I pray that you was a Christian and was just as zealous as I am, except for me being in these chains. Because Paul was a prisoner that they wanted to kill, but Festus, being a Jewish leader, uh, would not do it because Paul, remember, had dual citizenship, and you have to be, um, you, was, you are innocent into proving guilty. And the scribes and the Pharisees was not able to prove Paul guilty, and so they gave him a hearing that he is able to uh, make his case. And so he brought in um, Jewish people that know the culture and know what this fuss is about because he had to send this up to Caesar because Paul appealed to Caesar. And so what he did is after that's going through, Paul began again making his case for it and going on and he's saying to um, Agrippa, I know you believe the thing and Agrippa saying, you almost persuaded me and Paul said, I want you to be this way um, just like I am for I have the truth. And when you have a truth or you know a good thing, now in this day and time things are kind of changed because well, we'll say restaurants because we're not going to say clothing, shopping places, because when a, 
most of the time when a woman finds a good shopping place, she don't want to tell no other women. That's her little secret spot. A fishing hole for men. When they find a nice place where they're biting, they don't want to tell nobody because they don't want everybody there. They don't want everybody in they little, their spot. But Paul was saying, I want everybody to be just as I am, loving the Lord with everything and having a zeal for God. And I asked you guys last week, do you have more passion for a, a, a sport than you do for the Lord Jesus and for him saving you? And I asked you a very intimate question. With all of the things that God has done for you, why wouldn't you tell people? And so that's what Paul was beginning to go through and, and touch bases on all those things. So and they, after it was all said and done, they sat aside and began to start talking, which was, of course, the, the gov, um, you had um, Festus being the Roman leader. You had Agrippa being the king, um, the Israeli king, then being um, there with him, Bernice, his wife, and then you had... Um, the governor and you had the religious leaders and what I'm, I'm sure the religious leaders was not in this conversation that um, the, the political leaders were having. And so um, a, um, Agrippa said to Festus, if this man had not appealed to Caesar, man, we would let this man go. He has done nothing worthy of death. He ain't even did anything worthy of being locked up. And so because he appealed to Caesar, it had taken a higher course and you can no longer say we're going to do it this way. So that's what had taken place, guys, from there. And so then we move into verse number 27. Now, 27 is going to be kind of in the beginning, guys. It's going to be more so Paul doing travels to different cities and you will know which way this thing is going. They're setting up for what's getting ready to go. So I won't touch as much in the beginning on um, deeper things because it's just basically Paul doing a lot of traveling from here to there, okay? But it says in verse number 20, um, verse 27, starting with, um, chapter 27, um, verse number one, and it says, and when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners in prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus band. And so what he's saying is now it was all said and done. Remember, we had just went out of 26 where they said, okay, we heard this man case. If this man would not, a matter of fact, at the 26 and verse number 32, listen what Augustus said. This is the key. He said, he says, then said Augustus to Festus, this man, this man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed to Caesar. So in 26, 27, you are finding out that they're sending him on now because you appeal to Caesar. We have to give you your day in court. And so they set him, he says, and when it was determined, as they came um, to determine which way they're going to get him there. Now, well, Caesar is in, guess where, people? Rome. And guess where Rome is at? In Italy. And so what you are finding is they're saying, okay, we, got, we are determining the best way because you not only have a, a, um, a political prisoner, you also have a Jewish, um, not only a, a, a religious prisoner, but a political prisoner. And so we have to make sure this thing is done right. So they made sure in verse number one at 27, it says, and when it was determined that we should say that we should sail into Italy. So Italy is where Rome is at. Rome is where Caesar is at. And so what he is determining, okay, this is the way we determine we're going to get there. He says, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners um, unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus band. So there, Julius was one that had his rank, his clout of this set. This is the one you are responsible for getting this man to where he needs to be. Now, there was a certain law about a prisoner that Paul would have been in this case with this many people, um, with this much clout listening to him and, and trying to figure this thing out. Paul would have been considered a high value prisoner. So what you have to do is you have to protect this guy by any means necessary. But here's the thing about it. They found out. Now, remember, they have just found out which was um, Augustus and um, Festus and the um, governor and all these people, hyperlooping people, guess what they found out? That he done nothing wrong. And so what they did is Paul being a righteous man, he is stuck with unrighteous people. 
Again, verse number one. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and, and is a conjunction word, certain other prisoners. So Paul hadn't did anything wrong. We have already concluded that. Paul is just going through the political trial now. And so, but they stuck him with people that were prisoners, meaning those that had done wrong. Now, who does that sound like? That sounds like Jesus. And that's what we studied in um in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Jesus, who made his bed with prisoners, although he did no wrong. So Paul did no wrong. And what are you saying, um, preacher? I'm saying sometimes you will find yourself convicted in life with people that have done wrong, but that's not your story. But God says to you, it doesn't matter. You're in righteousness. I'm going to bless you in the midst of that. Me, I can speak for me. When I was being discharged from the United States military, I had what they call an RE3 discharge. Now, I think that was a good discharge. That wasn't that I was in, in the military doing drugs or or I wasn't, um, um, you know, disorderly or anything of that sort. That wasn't my story. I was a very, very good um um, recruit or soldier, if you will. But the issue is there was a conflict that went against my conscience and they had concluded that you're going to honor your God before you honor the United States military. And that was one of the first signs. One of the first signs is documented in, in U.S. government or U.S. records. It's documented that God has set me aside for a preacher of the gospel all the way back then. And that was in the early 80s. I'm going to say the mid-80s. So what God did, what it was is um, they were saying, well, late 80s. What they were saying was it was documented. This would be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so with that said, but the point was, but they put me into a barracks. And the barracks they put me in was a good barracks where people were being honorably discharged. It was well lit. It was, the barracks was clean. Everything was nice. And then they sent a, a carrier, which will be, or a person brought a message, which will, which will be like Julius was, a, um, a centurion of the Augustus band. So what he is, he's a, he is a soldier or the one that's to look over these prisoners. And so just like me, I was in this good barracks and they sent the person and I saw him talking to the leader of that barracks and then they called my name, minor R. And then they, a reporter said, pack your stuff. Then they took me over across the hall to the other room, which was an RE4. I think it was a mixed up RE3. But this was the bad discharge people. These were the ones that was on drugs, the ones that wouldn't listen, the ones that was, you know, trying to do anything. So they stuck me in the midst of with them. Yet I did no wrong. But God is saying, I need light. Light shines best in darkness. And so what was taking place is Paul, which was of light, was there with prisoners. Now, let me ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to compare yourself to Paul. Do you think Paul sat there with them prisoners and didn't say nothing about Jesus? No. What Paul did, that was just fertile ground. So he used the advantage to talk to people that did not know about Jesus. See, some of us are so much complaining because we are not where we, quote, think we should be or supposed to be, but we're right where God wants you to be. And if God wants you being light and innocent into a dark place of um, people that are um, um, have, guilty, so if you are light and innocent and God stick you, a person of light and innocence, into a place of dark and guilty, what do you think God wants? He wants you to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father, which is in heaven. So quit crying about your circumstance or situation. God knows your circumstance and situation. You couldn't have got there without his permission. So this is an opportunity for you to speak on behalf of the Lord Jesus, for you to be a light in an otherwise dark place. And that's what it was with Paul. So after sitting down and, and coming to the conclusion in 26, the last verse, that he was innocent, they then turned him over, determined which way they're going to get him to Rome for his case. They turned him over to Julius. And Julius already had the background on the whole situation. See, when you put people in a ship, you get a manifest. And the manifest tell you everything that you got because you got to be accountable for what's on that ship. And so Julius, I'm sure, had an account of all of the prisoners that he had because you have to be accountable. There was a Roman law that if a prisoner got away, you had to take their sentence. 
And so Julius understood who he had and what he had there. He knew all of the hoopla and everything was about God, um, everything about Paul. Remember, Julius was given this case because this came from the higher up, which was Festus. He was the um, he was pretty much over Rome. I'm going to say over um, that province. So you're looking at the head military guy. And told Julius, which was one of the military people, what I want to do. And the reason y'all see me smile so much, I love when the Holy Spirit take over and start exegeting and teaching the word. Because all of this stuff is fresh manna. It's fresh manna to me. I'm learning this stuff with you guys. And that's why I love to hear the Holy Ghost when he take over and start teaching. I jump in with him, just listen, listen, listen. I'm taking this in because this is a lot in one verse. This is a whole lot in one verse, saints. And so that's what it was. So Julius, uh, he was a centurion. A centurion meaning over a uh, hundred um, of the Augustus band. So what he said is this is his group, his sect, if you will. And so that's what was taking place. He realized who he has. He realized what um, what he have, um, have to take on. And so now my job, uh, Julius' job was to get them on the leg that he had, getting them to Rome. Okay? So in verse number two, Okay, it says, and entering into a ship of atrominium, we launch, meaning to sail by, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. So when we get them on the ship, now we need to know what course we're taking. So what he is saying is we're um a ship of so you'll see him. He's saying a ship here of atrominium, which launched. So we're launching from here, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia. So it's a certain route they want to go. They already have their manifest laid out. So uh, of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And so you're looking at this thing right here where they said, okay, we got our manifest. We know which way we're going. We know who's on the ship. Let's get rolling. They already have the plans. Now, let me say this. You may have your well-laden plans laid out, but sometimes life going to change your plans. We say life going to start lifing. But just because life, life, don't mean God changes his plans. Now, if God may even change the route, but that don't mean he will change his plans. And so they already laid this thing out, and it's good to be a planner. That's why the word of God tells you, me, look at the ant like slugger. Consider their ways who have no guide or overseer, but they store up in the summer because they know winter is coming. So it's nothing wrong with planning. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. A wise man lays up an inheritance for his children's children. So a wise person is going to leave something for the kids. And so what he's saying is they got their plans. Everything is together. Okay, and so now we start our launch. Let's start our cruise. We got the plans, everything laid out. And it says, and the next day we touch at, we touch at Sidon. And Julius courteously intrigued Paul and gave him liberty to go to his friends to refresh himself. Now, we have already established that a Roman soldier is responsible for every last one of the prisoners that he had. Look at what Julius did here, guys. It says, again, it says, and the next day we touched that Sodom. So they all took off with the sail and a day's journey out to sea. They have come, they have come to um, Sodom. And when they got there and Julius, 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 courteously. So what he said is he was benevolent. And look what he did. Courteously intrigued Paul. What he says, you know what, Paul, I go be with your friends. I know you know many people, many places. Go be with them. We're going to pull back off at this time. So that tells you they knew he was not guilty. They knew he did no wrong. They knew of his character. Now, when he gave him that liberty, if you would, he had a, um, what's that pass? There are people when they go into jail um, and they almost out, they have a pass to where they can come home or uh, go out early, go out in the daytime. Um, they let some of them on, what is that called? They may be out working on the side of the curves and stuff like that on the highways. Well, they're not going to run. These people only have a short time before their sentence is up. So they're not going to do anything stupid like run. They're going to be gone in a few days. Matter of fact, you know, they're the halfway house, if you will, something like that. Work release. That's it. How do you know? You're some kind of prisoner I don't know about. 
So it's a work release program. And so what that is, is a person that is, um, a, although they are a board of the state or, a, if you would, a, um, a criminal, because of their behavior and they're getting ready to be released, um, um, discharged um, from prison or what have you, they will allow them to go out during the day to work. And then they will bring them back at night. And as they get better, they then go into being um, where they were um, paroled. They will let you go out. And then you just have to go answer to um, the authorities over you. But nevertheless, that's what it was. So, so Julius courteously gave Paul um, leave to go. So what Julius was doing was helping spread the gospel. Because what did you think Paul was going to do once he got work release? Well, he was going to do work. And so what Paul did is he got out there and started proclaiming the word of God and preaching the word of God. He gave him liberty, um, gave him liberty to go, <laughs> go unto his friends to refresh himself. So, and it reminds me, I, I guys, there's so many things I think about. I remember I have an uncle and he was in the um, Marines. <laughs> he would go AWOL every weekend. I mean, the Marine people showed up at my mama's house all the time. That, that, come on, come on, man. We know you're in there. Come on and let's go. And so the point would be, he had a work, um, he had a release program. So it's like, don't you supposed to be, you have people that's in the military and every time you turn up, they in front of your house or talking with you and hanging out. Man, don't you supposed to be in the military? I mean, what do y'all do? And so what Paul was doing being released, um, Julius gave him courte courtesy and let him go. All right, Paul, go see your people. We're going to be leaving back at this time. Make sure you're here. And so, Paul, go refresh yourself. And so, Paul was able to sit down with his friends and encourage them. Encourage the word of God. Listen, when things, remember, there was a charter. All this stuff was laid out, but God has plans. And sometimes when you're supposed to be locked up, God will let you go free, free to do a thing. To do a thing for kingdom's sake. And so that's exactly what was looking at. So Paul was there to go refresh himself, to be with his friends, to talk with his friends, and to do, um, to proclaim the word of God. And that's what God wants for you. Anytime you get opportunity, go see those ones that are of the faith. In, in faith, encourage them. Encourage them along the way. And sometimes you got to call them to accountability. Sometimes you got to be the one to look at your brother or sister and call them to accountability because a real friend going to straighten some things out. I'm sure if something was going on in this city, Paul went and straightened it out while he was there. It's like you're going into, um, you're deciding, well, again, just an analogy. God give me a lot of these things. Guys, have you ever seen a person, there's dishes in the sink and they take and may use a cup and they go wash their one cup and leave the dishes. I mean, if you're going to wash the cup, you might as well wash the dishes. So Paul said, well, if I get to be free, I might as well go deal with some things of the house of God. But there's some people only think about themselves. They would go all the way. I mean, right there with a friend, right there with dear ones you love. And you purchase something. How would, how would y'all look if I got a, a few brothers with me and I go and we go to the store and we out there, we're hot. And, you know, it's hot. We were hot. And I go in and I go get me, um, I go buy me a soda or a bottle of water. And they just as hot in the car with me. And I pull out, say, 100. And I buy me a bottle of water. And then get the change and put it back in my pocket and go out there with a bottle of water and see my friends hot. What kind of sense that makes? If I'm going, matter of fact, what do you want? You want anything while I'm going in? Yeah, give me something to drink. Give me some water. Give me a soda, whatever. So you're going to go out. You're going to make sure that we take care of others. I'm taking care of. But there's some people only think about themselves. They only think about themselves. So Paul is saying, we thank God for Julius who gave liberty to Paul to be able to go and speak with his friends. Paul, I'm sure, encouraged them in the faith. It's not all about you. Yes, you're going through some things, but God has a law. Don't be deceived. God won't be marked. What you sow is what you will reap. So if you sow encouragement, you will receive encouragement. And so what God is saying is quit talking about your problems all the time. If you sow a listening ear, guess what? People will give a listening ear. And so that's what is happening here. So again, that shows you that Julius was very, very confident with Paul. He didn't worry about him. Paul's reputation preceded him. And Julius knew he could let him go and he would come back. That's not a problem. But some of us, God let you off the leash for a few minutes. And you in another, not county, but another state. So the thing is, God is saying, do we trust you? 
Do he trust you? Then when God give you a little lead way, you still going to proclaim the name of Jesus. Or you going to be one that's going to do things your way. In verse number four, he says, and when he had, and when, and when we had launched from thence, where's thence? They leaving, they leading uh, Saturn. So when he said, we packed up the next day, we're gone. He says, we sail on the Cyprus because the winds were contrary. So what they said is we intended to go this way. Remember, they was going to Asia. That's where it starts in verse number, um, verse number two. Meaning to meaning to sail by the coast of Asia. But what took place is because the wind began to come up, there's begin to be a serious storm. And that's what he's saying. And when we had launched from thence, meaning leaving Saturn, he says that uh, we sail under Cyprus. We went another way because the current would be so strong this way. We're going another way so we don't have to deal with that. It would be equivalent to if you know for a fact, you know your surroundings and you're going to work and it's been a real bad rainstorm. Well, you know it always flood out on this street. Well, I'm going to go this way. We're still going to the same place, work, but I'm going to go a different way because I know what's going to be over here because of the storm. All of this is going to be, you know, it's going to be always some tree don't fail over here or the flood don't rise and you can't get by there. So everybody's going to have to turn around and go this way anyway. So let me go ahead and go this way. And so that's what Paul was saying. Um, after they left from this, um, we sail on the Cyprus because the wind was contrary. So what he said is the wind began to rise. It begins to be a serious problem. So it's best that we take our ship and go this way. Sometimes God will alter your course. God will alter the course of where you're going, not your destination. He will alter the course to getting to your destination. So don't tell God how to be God, saints. Let God be God. He is good at being God, has always been, and will always be. So when God alters your course, he may alter your course, but he's not altering your destination. And so that's what you will find right there, guys. You are beginning to find um, that's what was taking place. So now he has altered the course, he says, he says, and when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lassi. So what he's saying is we altered our course and we went this way. We went to Cilicia and we went through Pamphylia and we came to Myra, a city in Lassi. So what he's saying it will be like we came this way. We came to Winston-Salem, a city in North Carolina. Or we came to Greensboro, a city in North Carolina. Or whatever city you're in, in the state you're in. Because every state has cities. And the city is not the state. It's just a part of the state. And so a part of their course that they was going on was they made um, a part of their um, destination that they was going in. They changed course and they seen other places. Cilicia, Pamphylia, Myra, so all of these places, guys, they're beginning to change and go different things. But again, what I want to stress is God loves you so much that he may alter your course. And if there's nothing else you get out of this study tonight, I want you to hear this. God may alter your course, but he has not altered your destination. So you need to keep that a preach. So you need to keep your keep your mindset about that. God may let you see something different or new, but he still know exactly where he's going to take you. So God wants you to understand it. So you're going there, he says, and there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy. Remember, that's where they started out at. But because started out, where did they start out going? Back to verse number one, guys. Again, and when it was determined that we should sail into Italy. So all of that um, changing has happened from verse one to verse six. That determined, remember, Italy was where they was going. Why was they going to Italy? Because Paul had made a claim that he want, um, made his case that he wants to hear who? Wants to be hear, heard by who? Caesar. Where was Caesar? In Rome. Where is Rome? In Italy. So, so you'll find out that's what was taking place. So the destination is Italy. Now, they may go different routes to get there. And that's what you're seeing. They have gone different ways. And why did they go different ways? Because the storm had arisen. Now, I'm going to help you guys out with something. If y'all don't know, I'm going to help you with something. I'm going to tell you something. And don't tell nobody that I told you this. This is private here between you and me. Okay? 
back during the days when Paul was there, they did not have airplanes. That's why he didn't fly to Italy. Because if it was an airplane, they would have put him on the cargo because he was a high-value prisoner. They would have flew him to Italy. But they didn't have planes yet. Planes did not come into the Wright brothers, and they came a whole lot after Paul. Okay, so they did not have planes, so they had to sail. And because they had to take the seas, because of the wind had risen and there was a lot of waves and things of that sort, they had taken different courses. And in verse number six, it says, and the centurion, he did his job. He found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy and he put us therein. So who is us? Meaning Paul. The prisoners and somebody else was on board with them, which was Aristarchus. And so all of them, they made the change. So it's um, a plane from when you go on a trip. Um, my wife and I, we was going on a trip. Where was we going? To where we flew into, I think, they flew into Georgia. I think it was. We, it took a little small plane, but we got on the plane. My wife liked to freak out because she's claustrophobic and had to keep her calm on the small plane till we got to the big plane to take us where we were going. It's called, you know, what do they call the flights when you go from one flight to another? All you people that fly know what I'm talking about. A uh, what? A commuter plane. Hey, you must travel. So, so yeah, we, we had a commuter plane. We left in Greensboro and we flew to, the, we flew to Charlotte. And then we got on our plane from Charlotte and we flew to where we were going. So the thing that's being made is Paul, they had a jump of a ship. We got you here. Now, this ship took you this far. Now we're going to get you on your ship so you can get to um, a ship again. Remember, um, Julius was doing his job. He's always looking, even with the adversity. And that's something, thank you, Lord, that you need to understand. Julius was already looking to get Paul where he needed to be because he was entrusted by Festus to get Paul to Italy. And so Julius was looking. And remember, there was a lot of turmoil and things that was taking place with the wind. But in verse number six, you can see, and there, and there um, the centurion found a ship of Alexandria selling to Italy. So with all of the quirks and turns that he was going through, he found the ship going to where he needed to get to Paul now. They don't sail a few days, but we got you. We got you a, a, a hop in the flights. That's what they call them, a hop. We're going to hop to this plane and go on. But what he's saying is, now we found a ship that's going to get you to where you're going. Julius has done his job. He has gotten Paul here and passed him off. Oh, so uh, passed him off to where he was going. To Italy. And so he put Paul and the prisoners there on. Again, Paul and, and he is confident there. And he had turned them over to other centurions. Meaning, okay, I hand them off. It is now your responsibility. Okay, and so, um, okay, in verse number seven, look what it says. And when we had sailed slowly, Many days. And when we had sailed slowly, many days, and scarce was come over against, over against Sinaitis, uh, the winds not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salmon. So what he is saying is, again, you can see there is some resistance. Saints, you're going to have resistance in life, but you got to keep sailing forward. Some people, when you um, hit some resistance, some of them just break down. But firm foundation, family, y'all know, and to every single person that have watched us long enough at firm foundation, you all know. The banners in the church in the pulpit says what? Barriers, roadblocks, obstacles. And we at Firm Foundation, we know the teachings of barriers, roadblocks, and obstacles. They are set up for one reason and one reason only. What's that? To separate the committed from the uncommitted. That's the purpose. And so you see right there in verse number seven, verse number seven, again, again in verse number seven, you say this. He says, and when we had sailed slowly many days. So that lets you know they're on this boat and there are some serious waves that they're dealing with. And Scurus was come over against Sinaius. Sinaitis. 
the winds not suffering us, we sail on the creek and against, against Simon. So the guys we have here, the word we have here, saints, is I want you to understand. God loves you. Where we at? Verse number seven. We'll pick up there next week, if the Lord's will. But saints, understand there's going to be some resistance in your walk with God. You have to make it up in your mind you're going to continue walking forward. You're going to have to make it up in your mind you're going to continue loving God and doing what he told you to do. Because people have heard about your character, but character is nothing if it's not tested. So God wants you, he wants you to know that he has an eye on you. And there are some people who will allow you lead way because your character precedes you and they trust you. They are putting a lot on you. Let me end with this. There are certain people that are putting their name on your name. They're saying, I know this is a good person, a godly person. I know this is a righteous person. I will bank on this. And when you go contrary to the things of God, you embarrass them. They shame because they put their name out there for you. So guys, when they get that opportunity and people like Julius in this situation trust you to go out to be with friends, honor God, do the right thing. Do what you're supposed to do and you'll see that God will bless you tremendously. Thank you, Father, for taking time and studying of the word together. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for stepping in and intervening, Lord, with the study. I thank you that I learned so much about your word to be able to see these deep things, things I would have missed and looked right over. But yet, Lord, you showed me things. You was able to point out things that lines up with your scripture, Lord, and your word. And I just want to tell you, Lord, I thank you. I love you, Holy Spirit, for taking time to feed your people. For the people of God are hungry. They are yearning to hear from you, Father. So much time they hear from men. So many people are promoting themselves. And we got to hear all about their, um, their bloat heartiness and, and all about themselves. We don't care to hear about that. People don't care to hear Pastor Minor. They want to hear the Holy Spirit that speaks through Pastor Minor. So Holy Spirit, thank you for taking time and teaching the word of God to us. We've learned it. I pray, Father, that we do not allow your word to go void, but that we may take your word and apply it to our lives, that we may see the benefit thereof, Lord, that we may glorify your name and teach the word of God to the people of God. And as, Lord God, we have opportunity and they allow us to speak with people, let us, Lord God, be a fisher of men knowing how to take the word of God in such a way and explain it and tell people about the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for us that we may glorify your name. Now, if you do this for us, Lord, we will be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for this is a prayer that we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father for it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior for you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Hey, if you're in agreement with that prayer, say amen. Amen, saints. Let me ask this. Are you one that's out there and you have heard the word of God today? You have seen a zeal or a passion today and you say that seems like a living God that he is serving, not the stale old religious things that people are going through. And I want to be a part of that body. I want to be a part of that what he has. And I want to offer him to you. It's Jesus. He is Jesus, the Christ. He lives and he will live in you and through you. So if you are one that do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and would like to know him as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to walk you through God's plan of salvation. But before we move, I want to ask you a question. Have you been one that the devil talked the word of God out of you? You decided you want to do your own thing your way and go your own way to do your thing. And now the fruit of your lifestyle or choices now have come upon you. And it's a very dark and, and cold season that you're in. And you're saying, I want to get it back right with God. I want to line it up with him and rededicate my life to Christ. Now, if you are that person, hold the hand of the person that never knew Jesus. And I'm going to walk you both through God's plan of salvation and God's plan of rededication. Hawking unto my voice. This is what I say. I said, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that is open before me. I take full advantage of it now, Lord. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life and sit on the throne of my heart. I want to openly, Lord, repent of the life and sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. If you, Jesus, will come into my life and sit on the throne of my heart, 
I will serve you the rest of the days of my life. With that said, Lord, I make an open confession with my mouth that Jesus, you are Lord. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life and save me. I believe, Lord, you have done that. So I want to say, Lord, thank you for saving my soul. I make an open confession that Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords in my life. And I serve him as that. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. Now, you want, want to get into a good Bible-believing church and learn the word of God. Now, if you cannot find one or you don't feel comfortable right now, stay here with us right here on this page, right here on this channel, and we'll just continue to teach you the word of God. Now, you say, well, okay, I want to be, um, I want to be a member of Firm Foundation. How do I go about being a member? Two things we ask. One, do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God? You say, yes. Okay, second, are you willing to obey the rules and the regulations of this ministry so as long as they line up with the word of God? You say, yes. Okay, we say, welcome to Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry, a ministry that love people right where they are and want to work with them to put them where God wants them to be. Now, you might, with that said, you say, I want to come and visit you guys. Where are you located? 1851 Highway 66 South in the city of Kernersville in the state of North Carolina. Just Google it. It'll get you right there, guys. And we are huggy, shaky, handy type of people. We just want to see you and hug you. Everybody that ever came to visit us says, you know what? These people are very lovely. So if you were us, guys, we would love to see you there. Love to see you there. Now you say, I want to support the ministry financially. How do we go by doing that? Right here on this page, QR code. Go ahead and send it in. You want to send it snail mail? Same address. 1851 Highway 66 South, Kernersville, North Carolina. Every dime will be used according to God's will, according to God's word, law, and way. No shady business. We love you, saints. Look forward to seeing you right here again on this page Sunday morning at 10 a.m. If you come in person, we start at 9 a.m. Christian education, dynamite teaching, dynamite classes. This Sunday? Oh, well, saints. We're not going to be there this Sunday. It's our church anniversary. We're going to be at the park. So come and join us, guys. Come and be at Lake Park. Come and eat with us. Come and enjoy us and really get to spend some time and talk with us. So, guys, if you don't see us right here on this page um, Sunday morning, that's because we're going to be at the park. I'm sure they'll give you some clips of us enjoying ourselves. As a matter of fact, guess where we're going um, Saturday? We're taking the church to Carowinds. Yes, I'm going to put some of them senior citizens on the craziest roller coaster ride and I'm going to see how they handle it. Okay, no, we're not going to do that, saints. But I tell you, some of the saints, some of these older saints think they're still young. We're going to find out if their stomach can hold it. And I'm going to be one of them. Let's get it. Love you guys. Look forward to seeing you here again, guys. Be blessed in Jesus' name.